this marsh, if you were here 150 years ago, it was like a patchwork of all different kinds of micro uh, environments. And, and you had sedges and a few bushes and some Phragmites and some Spartina and just really a dozen different major species. And in the last hundred years, it's become essentially a monoculture. Over 90% of the surface is covered by one plant, a species called Phragmites australis, which is simply common reed. For some reason, this northern European subspecies that came in to Connecticut about 200 years ago has just taken off up and down the East Coast, from Maine to Florida. Phragmites can hold like the waste and stuff, but too much of it, it's not needed. Especially where like you have other native plants that are trying to grow and the smell too, it's like horrible. <laughs> the central issue with this invasive is that it disrupts the balance that is at the heart of the existing food chain and can often lead to a tremendous loss in biodiversity. What got me involved in the marsh was working with these kids. See, it's going out all, every which way. One thing. But what came out of that has been a 10-year ecological study of the marsh that is really unique in terms of how much real data it's produced. And we've had some discoveries about the extent to which the marsh has become a monoculture agriculturally and the extent to which we've really seen a loss in diversity in the fish species as a result. There's been a big controversy in the last year plus uh, in Piermont uh, about whether to try to remediate this invasive plant and if so, how. The cost-effective solution is to spray with a chemical a lot of people are opposed, so what this summer is trying to look at non-chemical ways to help to manage the Phragmites invasion. So the idea that we're working on is if you roll black plastic out over this thing, we think we can get the subsurface hot enough to actually kill the frag roots by heat. Is it all just dead? What do you notice? They're shoots. Angry frag. Angry frag? <laughs> I like that. It's trying to fight back. The sample's still intact. One, two, there we go. The way we started doing our experiment was we collected rhizome samples from different plots that we had. We brought them back to the lab to boil them at different temperatures. And they stood there for 24 hours just to determine how we can cook the rhizome, which is a root, to kill off frag. Uh, so you're not gonna take this one? Smells like provolone. Huh? Wow. No, it's yeah. We replanted them again today to figure out how do they grow. A little spider. Get away. But most of them are pretty dead by now, so I doubt they're grow. <laughs> This plant is not a monster. This plant's not an evil thing. It's a very productive plant. It provides some important ecosystem services. It is sequestering carbon. It is holding the marsh together. It is keeping up with sea level rise. It is providing a home to muskrats. But you have to, at the same time, have a perspective on what's been lost. This is not something you're going to fix in a year or 10. It's all up and down the coast. It is going to reinvade a number of times. And unless you create the human infrastructure required for that kind of long-term management, then you really haven't done much. <laughs>